Hello everyone. Welcome to Remote Sensing and GIS for Rural Development, NPTEL course. This is week five, lecture one. Let us do a recap of what we have learned in lecture four and how it is related to lecture week five. In lecture four, we had done an introduction to GIS, which was part one, vectors. In lecture week five, we will be discussing more on rasters, which is the second type of data. <laughs> to be specific, we gave an introduction to GIS, like what is GIS, how does GIS um, process the data, we looked at the flowchart of defining a problem and then understanding the issues. We also looked at multiple options for GIS software, of which we will be using QGIS. We also looked into the different versions of QGIS and we will focus mostly on the most stable version, which is 3.2214 till date in 2023, early 2023. So this might be different. When you view this video in 2024, 2025, depending on the registrations. But always look for the most stable version. Then we went through the process of downloading the data for the software. And then we ran and installed the software on my machine, which was shared on the screen. Once the GIS was set up, it was also necessary to understand what are the different types of data in GIS. Then we stopped and looked at vectors and rasters. We defined that these are the two types. And we went in depth to vectors in week four. <coughs> we also looked at QGIS tools for vector analysis. So once we've defined the two types of data, then there are tools that work on vector and work on raster separately. So we had looked at the specific tools in vector analysis that are installed in QGIS. The tools may be different in whatever GIS versions or software you use. However, we covered the basic tools, so you will definitely come across the same tools. Different names would be there. For example, buffer could be labeled as buffer vector or buffer line, buffer polygon, etc. Buffer is always the same tool. It creates a buffer around a shape file, point, polygon, uh, or line. So the name of the tool might be different in different softwares. As per GIS, the application of the tool is same. Then we look at applications of GIS vector data and analysis. So we define the data. We looked at some tools that can organize and play with the data. And then we jumped into the applications. Now, how is this linked to week five? We had mentioned that we have two types of data, so vector and raster. I had introduced what is a raster, but I didn't get into in-depth discussions. That is what we will accomplish in week 
5. It is also necessary to look at the difference between raster and vector, the two types of data. Some may get confused that it is a full coverage. So is it a vector or a raster? Coverage need not always say it is a raster and vice versa, right? So we should be careful about what is embedded in the data, how the data is represented, and that defines raster or vector. Sources of raster data for rural development, we will look into some sources. And then we'll jump into some intro raster tools in uh, QGIS platform. So there are raster tools uh, generic, and there are raster tools that you could use throughout the GIS network and specific to certain softwares. We will have an introduction of the major, major raster tools. One example is the raster calculator and the masking tool. These tools are very, very important and almost across the software systems for GIS, it is used. Then we'll have some inputs on data storing methodologies. <clears throat> Throughout, I will stress the fact that this is based on QGIS software, the recent stable version, and mostly for rural development. There are multiple other applications and tools that are more specific for different applications such as atmospheric science, transportation, um, heritage mapping, etc. But we will be mostly focusing on rural development. Some case studies may, and may come in and go depending on the basics. So what is the GIS data model? It implies that multi-source data is converted to digital formats if it has a spatial location. For example, let's take this example of from the world, there could be multiple layers. GIS is about layering one layer above the other and then drilling down to take, uh, which is the analysis, to take the research. So now comes the point, what are these data? All these data should have a particular input, which is the data plus the spatial data. The spatial location of the data is GIS, right? So now, since data is organized as layers, coverages or themes, it is uh, same concepts, but it could be different types of data. So coverage or theme could be synonymous, but it has different data formats. It can have data formats. So please understand that part that yes, it is synonymous coverage or theme, but it can be different data part of which there are two types, vectors and rasters. However, each layer is representing a common theme of the problem. You are looking at rural development, and I've said that crop acreage is one um, very, very important rural development question. We cannot map on top of uh, coverage something in rural India. You cannot map uh, urban coverage, for example. If industrialization has happened, yes. But given that it is focusing on crops, you have to concentrate on crops. The so common uh, theme is there. Layers are integrated using explicit location on Earth's surface because Earth location is what ties all this data together. See, the data can be spread different locations. Why is it on top of each other? Is because the location is safe. For one location, you cannot have only one data. That is the beauty of GIS. You can keep on stacking. So it is a comparison if you would like to see. In one location, you can either build one house, which is called a bungalow or a separate house, or you can build an apartment, which is vertically tall. If you look at the number of levels, 
this could have 33 levels and this is only one level and that is what data will also give because here in one level you'll have only um, four to five people living whereas here every floor you have four to five people living provided both are the same um, entity okay or the same people you are taking in terms of age uh, occupation etc so that is a common feature so gis is on the left which i explained this is about a vertical um, stacking of data and then you take an information out so layers are integrated using explicit location that is a single location thus geographic location is the organizing principle the location is the organizing principle and now it doesn't matter if it is raster or a vector which means one floor can be green in color the other floor can be uh, blue in color and then green and then red brown whatever it is so the colors represent different uh, layers so it doesn't matter in gis if um, uh, how many other different layers come up as long as your software and your computer can hold it so the location is what is key uh, we have already looked into this in week four but because we are discussing raster i'll just quickly go through this again in a real world scenario which is given in the bottom uh, you have a, a lake um, and a river um, or a streamline that brings water to the lake and you have a grassland. Uh, around the grassland, you have some marshy lands and forest um, and that has been uh, accurately depicted as a 2D surface in the bottom. So what you see in the bottom um, is my pointer. So what you see in the bottom is the real life scenario. And you do have um, on the top uh, the 3D real life world, uh, which is being converted to a 2D surface. So rasters are in grids, which is on the top. You have divided the real world into grids. The grids are called pixels. Inside each one is called a pixel. Um, so you grid, you discretize it, which means gridding the surface. And then each square in the grid is called a pixel. Uh, it has a location and a value, right? The pixel is centered and it knows the size of the square. So if you know the center and you know the size of the square, you can easily draw it. It's size as in um, from the center, what is the distance to the side of the square? So if you know that it is equidistant, right? From the center, uh, you can have uh, equidistant to the perpendiculars to the side. So that is how you could definitely create um, a location, a single location for a pixel. However, the data is averaged for that location. As I clearly said, suppose this entire thing is one pixel. This entire thing may be a one pixel in a satellite image. Uh, so what it will happen is for it is a one location, but across that grid. And across the grid, what is the land use, land cover, the dominant value comes in as the value, the value as given here. For example, for this one, we can say the brown color is dominant, so grassland is dominant. So it will be brown color in the value. So satellite image and aerial photos are already in this format, which is gridded. And that is why you call photographs as um, pixels, right? 4K resolution, high pixel, high definition, these are all terms that say that it has been gridded and each grid has a value. Whereas vectors are li linear, uh, it is non-continuous, it has points, lines, and polygons, um, and they are uh, called features with attributes. Features are the class, house, lake, etc. And under the class, there are data, and that data or sub-columns are called as attributes. One more representation of the world we had looked at. Um, in a raster, I'll just only focus on the raster here. Uh, so we have a real world where you have a river and trees, houses uh, in a real world, which is a 3D uh, mesh. Uh, you have discretized it in, in, um, by, by uh, forming grids. So this has been divided into rows and columns sorry if my drawing is not as good as it should be uh, because i'm using a pointer okay so you get the idea that 
each pixel is what is represented here, right? And then you uh, you use the value inside the pixel as the the dominant value inside the pixel as the single value. So for here you have rows and columns, uh, zero to nine, zero to nine. It is a grid in squares. Uh, it has each pixel is given here. You have one pixel. Uh, I can color code it uh, for just to show you uh, the pixel. So this is uh, one pixel uh, at a time. Um, and you can use this. Yeah. So that is one pixel. And then you have the gridded lines. Um, what you can do next is you could see that in the grid, in the pixel, what is the dominant value it is taking? So for that location, what is the dominant value? Again, the location is not a single point, but across the square, across the pixel, uh, what is the dominant? So here's nothing, nothing which is a barren land, barren land, let's say land is empty. Uh, and then you have houses. There's one house in two, one house in six and, uh, and seven. So six and seven is this one, um, whereas this house is at one and two. So uh, on the column, it is one, and then on the row, it is two. So this is how a real life world can be represented as a raster uh, and then picked up. So how, how are uh, they done? Again, the real world is uh, converted to a 2D surface. Two types of data is there. One is vector and raster. In a vector, you have lines, uh, polygons, and uh, points. Uh, for each um, real world scenario, whereas in raster, the entire plane has been discretized into grids and each pixel takes a value. So uh, when I go into the differences between these two, uh, I will focus on Y. So you have uh, pixels as the dominant uh, division of the data, whereas features is the definition division of the data in the vectors. How are uh, spatial elements represented as rasters? Um, stores images as rows and columns. Image, so the image here has been stored as a row and column. As I showed you in the previous slide, one and two, we had a house. So as per the row and, and columns location, um, it stores uh, the data as an information and the location. So stores images as rows and columns of numbers with a digital value number DN for each cell. The DN uh, for each cell is very unique. So as I said, row one, um, uh, row two in the previous example. So row two and column one is unique. Only one pixel sits there, not multiple pixel takes that location. Units are usually represented as square grid cells that are uniform in size. So always it is square and it should be uniform. You cannot have a green bigger than red or yellow. Uh, it can be only when you do a local discretization as done in hydrological models. But for raster data, all are same size grids. And that is why uh, your green is not bigger than the blue or the yellow is not bigger than the green. It is the same size. With this, what happens is you have uniform spread of the data uh, with equal pixel size and the dominant land use land cover or rainfall is taken as a value for it. Data is classified as continuous, such as in the image. You don't have an image, uh, whatever size is it. it. It can be an oval image, it can be a square image, a rectangle image, A4, whatever size. Uh, every image has full coverage. You don't see inside an image a white plain area. If that is the case, it is called an error. Okay, so within the frame, every single inch should be or centimeter or whatever the smaller size is should be occupied with data in here image the data is color uh, so it is continuous such as in the image given below in the image uh, here you do not have any blank spaces 
the pink dotted squares are also data. It is continuous or thematic, which as I said, rainfall, land use, land cover, these are the themes. Thematic maps and the data is being applied across, where each cell denotes a feature type, only one feature type, but it denotes the entire thing. So here the theme is land use, land cover. The cell could be a um, river or a house or a tree based on the feature which is within the, which is the data, right? The dominant data. There are numerous data formats for grids. When we looked at shape files, uh, we saw that it is .shp, .shpx, um, and then other uh, data that supports the vector. So it's only one type of forming, but in the one type, there are multiple, multiple sub files. Whereas in raster, there are numerous grid formats, how the grid is stored and how the locations are stored. There are numerous formats. Someone may ask why, sir, uh, for raster you have numerous formats. Uh, it is one of the limitations uh, has been discussed is that rasters have bigger size. And for the bigger size, uh, with evolution of science and technology, with upgradation of technological interfaces, there is new formats that are being discovered or developed. Why? Because they want to cut the image in a particular fashion to store it effectively and retrieve it effectively. Remember that if it is too big, it is difficult to store and also difficult to retrieve. Uh, both are important for spatial analysis, storing and retrieving. So to make that faster, there are always upgradation of the formats and that gives rise to a different or multiple formats for rasters. People would be happier with the simple shape file, so you don't see much updation, uh, but rasters, yes. And that is the same reason why uh, initially you could store only one, two images in a, in a pen drive. Uh, a floppy disk may have uh, two, three, and a CD-ROM may have um, you know hundreds of uh, files, uh, images, whereas now a single pen drive uh, can have uh, multiple, multiple GBs of data, which is raster. So now we have known what is a raster, what is a vector. Next, we will see what are the key differences. Each object is a pixel in a raster database and has only one attribute value one feature. So one feature, one attribute is merged here, one data, only one data per pixel. It's not like rainfall is there or not. There's just rainfall, which is one or zero for no rainfall, right? So rainfall is the theme, rainfall is the attribute. If it is no rainfall, it is zero, uh, but still our color is given for zero, which is white. Um, and then blue could be rainfall. So has one attribute value, Example, land type is equals to one is one value. Uh, elevation is how much the land is elevated from the zero level, which is the sea level. Uh, and you could see that 830 meters uh, or feet, depending on the data, you have one value for the pixel. You don't have a range for a pixel. One pixel only takes one value. However, in a vector, each object, each object which is represented in a GIS framework uh, in a vector database can have multiple attribute values. Example, a county or a district boundary has attribute information for area, population, demographics and many others. So you don't stop with just the district name or the village name. There are multiple, multiple other data that are stored. As I said, there are subheadings. The name could be um, the, the predominant column that is holding it. Here, the district name. And within the district, you have multiple uh, attributes that explain the data further. Sometimes too many attributes do not explain, but spoil the data. Uh, so be careful about 
the size and volume uh, relation to the quality. Do not always think that too much data always explains better. Too much also has a lot of errors and issues. Some more raster versus vector definitions. Um, so now we have seen the uh, raster versus vector. Uh, one of the other things that we should discuss is the advantages and limitations and how it compares between each other. In a raster, the most uh, common data format uh, is the raster because um, most of the big data, the data that covers the entire planet comes as rasters. Uh, easy to perform mathematical and overlay operations. Why? Because for each location, you should have data if the layer is added. It's not like, oh, I don't have data. How am I going to uh, do analytical uh, mathematical operations? Since always it will have data, you will have to use it as continuous data. And that is easier for you to do calculations. Suppose you have data gaps you don't have data for that particular location, you are not able to do a calculation. Okay, so that thing is removed uh, because we use a continuous data. This data is uh, stored in each pixel and each pixel is together uh, mixed in this raster to as an entire frame. Satellite information, which is the information procured from satellites, is easily incorporated in a raster. The satellite coverage is continuous. And based on that property of raster, it is easily incorporated as a raster data format. It does better represent continuous form uh, data compared to vector data. And vector advantages are uh, accurate position is uh, given. So you do not play around saying that, oh, somewhere in the pixel there is trees. Either the dominant is trees or not. However, in a vector, you can add multi-dimensionality in the same pixel. Okay. So for example, the pixel is your uh, uh, land um, holding of a farmer. The average uh, land holding is one hectare. Uh, so let's say that one hectare is one pixel. The farmer might have some issues with growing a monocrop in the land. Let's say he's not going to grow, uh, he or she is not going to grow sugarcane, uh, but some tomatoes, some spinach, some uh, banana, and um, maybe drumstick. All these are within that small piece of land. Uh, how will that show in a vector is each plant will have a specific location or a polygon. So it will be a point data or a polygon data. Whereas for the raster, all of this is one data. The dominant data will be uploaded as a layer okay, for that pixel. So that is what the advantages for vector. It is not continuous. However, for that particular location, it is the best data available. It is the best for storing discrete thematic features, for example, roads, shorelines, seabed features. Think about this. If you're going to do um, a map of the uh, water bodies, ocean and rivers, uh, the land is part, right? Uh, you cannot just show in a raster the lake alone without the data boundary from rasters. Uh, so you have land and water. However, in a vector, you don't need this. You can just put a boundary and say this location, this boundary is there for water. And that is where uh, it has uh, less storage. It's not continuous. So it doesn't have to put storage everywhere. It is compact data storage requirements is there. You don't need big um supercomputers or storage facilities can associate unlimited number of attributes for specific features again i've said this in the la week four not unlimited depending on your computer's speed and performance power uh, it will give uh, some number of columns the columns are the uh, sub attributes the raster file formats as i said there are multiple there's not only one format 
Um, and uh, the, the often ones are JPEG, TIFF, PNG, SID, GRID, uh, IMG image. Um, and you could see that the icon looks like a gridded box. So you see, uh, initially you would see like it's a bar of chocolate, uh, but it's not. So if you look at the bar of chocolate, it has lines and then um, uh, which are vertical and horizontal, thereby giving rows and columns. Each, each uh, chocolate you can break as a pixel. So that is what you could see here. The icon for a raster data is given as a pixel uh, or um, gridded land. The vector set is given as different. We've seen this in the previous lecture. Spatial data, raster images, uh, elevation grids, any data that is stored in terms of pixels rather than lines, points, etc. Again, another definition. You could see here that the, the river line is not a line, but a grid, a grid grid, which is linked to each other. Um, this is um, the Columbia slope model uh, for data. Uh, sometimes, only sometimes, um, there are tables associated with the raster, and it depends on the data type, the dot grid, dot IMG, dot JPEG. So based on the format and the size of the class, the size of the data, you will have an extension table. So spatial data is stored um, uh, in a database. And I would like to stress here that in a geo database, you can have vectors and rasters together. It's not like you have to separate your rasters, separate your vectors. However, uh, you can have them all in one working geo database as this is there. You have a geo database and you can store it. In normal circumstances, I have a folder. The folder is GIS data. And within the folder, there are subfolders for raster or rivers. Um, and then you have uh, subfolders for vectors, administrative boundaries, river boundaries, et cetera. So uh, there are both limitations and advantages of using raster and vector. Uh, so we cannot say one is better than the other. It depends on your problem statement and GIS tools that you're going to use. Uh, so you can always have all these uh, data in your database folder mingled together uh, because GIS, when you open it, it will tell you what type of data it is. For example, if this is being shown, it shows that this is a polygon, uh, a line, and then a point. And then it also shows that this is a raster. With this, I would like to conclude uh, today's lecture. Uh, you would also uh, go back to these forums and uh, manuals if you have difficulties and questions. Uh, the links are given here. So please use them as much as possible for updating or brushing up your QGIS skills uh, because that will, you'll be using um, much in this course. With this, I conclude. Thank you.